Growing in our faith when we face trials of many kind. That's Hunter Dozier's story with the Kansas City Royals, and he joins us today. It's coming up right now on Sports Spectrum. This is Sports Spectrum, the intersection of sports and faith, where we bring Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Welcome to the show. I am Jason, and this is the Sports Spectrum Podcast. We're so glad you're tuning in to our show today. Make sure you check out our website, sportspectrum.com, each and every day for content, articles, and stories on the intersection of sports and faith in Jesus Christ. Right there at sportspectrum.com, you have a daily devotional. You got all sorts of podcasts from our podcast network, including this show. You also have articles and stories on different people like Hunter Dozier, and it's all available for free right there at sportspectrum.com. Make sure you sign up for our weekly newsletter as well. The Sports Spectrum weekly newsletter is free, and it comes right into your email inbox every single week. We don't spam you. We don't over email you. You get notes every single day. We don't have any of that. No, we just are about keeping you up to date on what's happening here at Sports Spectrum. And you can do that and sign up. Just click the newsletter icon right at the top of the website at sportspectrum.com. We are presented today by our friends at Compassion International, releasing children from poverty in Jesus' name. I want to tell you about Fill the Stadium and the Fill the Stadium initiative. And it's a place where about a year or so ago, we talked about having this dream and desire to fill 70,000 seats representing 70,000 kids who were left without a sponsorship because of COVID-19. And we are making a dent. We really are. God has provided for compassion here. Over 56,000 seats have now been filled with this initiative, Fill the Stadium. And I'm talking about this help is providing essential food and medical care and support for a child and their family during this pandemic. We're almost there. We're almost at the point where we can say we actually filled the stadium, but it's not full yet, and we need your help. Go to fillthestadium.com to donate and help us achieve our goal of helping 70,000 kids be released from poverty. Fillthestadium.com, a stadium that cannot remain empty. Fillthestadium.com. All right, let's get to our conversation with Hunter Dozier, the Kansas City Royals outfielder and third baseman. He went to Denton High School in Denton, Texas in his teen years and then went to college at Stephen F. Austin. And coming out of Stephen F. Austin, he was selected by the Royals in the first round of the 2013 MLB June Amateur Draft. Eighth overall, made his Major League debut three years later in 2016. And last February, just a couple months ago, he signed a big four-year deal to remain with the Royals. In 2019, he led the American League with 10 triples. When we recorded this interview, it was back in the middle of the summer. Hunter was struggling on the field. Wasn't having the best season. He's grinding as he as he put it. But I thought it said a whole lot about who Hunter Dozier the man is when he said yes to come on our show and talk about his faith. And we talk of baseball as well, of course, but I really wanted to focus on what's it like when you're going through it to continue to trust in God. And Hunter is going through it. Now, it's 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 relative, of course, when you say going through it because it's baseball and it's on the field. But this is his battle right now that he has to fight. And I think you'll really be uh, impressed with his answers and how he's going through this right now with his faith. Hunter Dozier from the Kansas City Royals is our guest here today on Sports Spectrum. Let's take a listen. What's up, Hunter? How are you? How are you doing? Thanks for having me on. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, man, I'm doing well. Uh, glad that you're here with us and, and glad that you're back playing. I do want to start because I thought it was fascinating to watch and not in a good way, obviously, on May 14th. And it was this, what I would call, unintentional collision between you and Jose Abreu. And it was, it was you guys both collided. You were both clearly shaken. But it was one of the most bizarre things I think I'd ever seen. You, you don't see a lot of wow, I've never seen that before type of situations in baseball. That was one of those when I saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, it felt so horrible to watch somebody have to go through, but it's something that you don't 
really ever see in terms of how the situation unfolded. Can you kind of take us through what happened and, and uh, what that was like for you to experience that? Yeah, well, I definitely never experienced anything like, like that on a baseball field. I did grow up playing football, so I was, <laughs> I'm used to the collision, but it was just yeah. one of those weird plays. Like I hit a pop up and it kind of went straight up. Um, I looked up and there, the catcher grand doll, um, it, it looked like it was right at him. And when I started to run, he kind of, the, the fly ball kind of drifted into the line. So I wanted to avoid grand doll. So I kind of went around him. And I had my head down when I was going around him. And then I start running to first. And by the time, like, right when I start looking up, Abreu's just charging. And yeah. by the time, like, right when I lift my head up, we just make a collision. Um, I mean, he's a, he's a big guy. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it was just it, – it got him pretty good. It got me pretty good. I just – I remember everything. I don't think I, I never – I didn't get knocked out, but it just, like, the wind got taken out of me. I was already kind of dealing with, like, a neck issue. Um, so that just kind of made it a lot worse. Um, but yeah, it was just, just a weird, a weird play that probably won't ever happen again. Um, it's just unfortunate. I'm glad he's, you know, he was all right. He was able to play the next day. I was showing some concussion, um, symptoms. So I had to sit out for a little bit, but it was just, it was a weird, a weird little situation right there. Does having a, a, an incident like that change anything about how you play the game like or even how you run to first i'm just thinking like man okay you put your head down you'd look up and there he is and you run into him are you like never putting your head down again when you're hitting you know and, and when you're running i don't know i'm just trying to think or do you just chalk it up as you know a one-off and move on and just go back to what you were doing it's funny you say that because my first game back i hit almost the exact same ball Oh. And I'm like, I caught myself like putting my head down and just running to first. But right when I put my head down, I said, no, lift up, like <laughs> run to first. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, I'm always the guy that's going to run hard to first. Um, but yeah, I mean, just look, maybe look where I'm going. I mean, I think I put my head down just because I was getting out of Grandall's way and just kind of like look, looking down, getting out of his way. And then I was looking up. And by the time I looked up, he just, he was there and he's looking at the ball, trying to make a play. Um, so it was just like a, it was an accident, but I think you just chalk it up as an accident and just continue playing the same way. Do you, when you go through something like that, and it's not like a, a horrific injury or anything, I mean, it looks bad when it happens, but thankfully both of you guys were, were able to come back pretty quickly. It didn't like knock you out for the year or anything like that. Um, does your faith enter into the equation when you suffer an injury, whether it's like that or another injury that maybe you've suffered in your journey and how that faith plays a role, whether it's prayer and just spending time with God when you're going through something, or even when you had to sit out a few games, uh, concussion like symptoms and things like that, how does your faith play a role in recovery? And I mean, I'm guessing it's going to play a role in all of your life. And we're going to talk, tell that story, but specifically for something like that. Yeah, I mean, because I feel like injuries is something that you can't control. Um, definitely if you like take you try to take care of your body, you try to, you know, do the right things. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, you have to lean on him. And, you know, it's we're extremely blessed because that collision could have been a lot worse. Right. Um, if I don't if I don't lift my head up and I go down with my head down, I mean, who's you don't know what could happen. I mean, it's you see it in football all the time and those guys you know, get injured really bad. So, you know, luckily, um, and I thank him for that. I did look up and that, you know, nothing happened to Abreu. Um, I know he had a little cut on his eye and stuff and, um, but yeah, it could have been a lot worse. So I'm extremely thankful that I was only out for a couple of games and, um, nothing happened like seriously. Baseball is such a highs and lows game, right? It's up and down. And you talked about how, you know, that faith, plays a part in your life. And I have to imagine that helps you kind of stay steady when you're struggling, you know, on the game that we refer to that, you know, we're recording this, you're in Oakland you had an RBI double last night, but a night before you might not have had a good night or the night before that you might've had five hits or whatever. It's up and down and up and down. I have to imagine that faith is kind of a constant steadying flow for you to help you get through a long baseball season. It is. And definitely this year, I mean, this year, 
um, has been a grind for me. It's not the, not the start I wanted, um, not the year I imagined so far. Sure. And um, I've had to lean on the Lord a lot this year, uh, more than ever. And um, because, you know, struggles in baseball, I mean, this is a game that we care a lot about. Um, I love this game and I want to help, you know, help the team win. And when you're not producing on the field, getting the results on the field, um, I mean, it can, it can drive you crazy, but I have to lean on the Lord. I have to know, I have to remind myself that, and I think something that I've learned this year is, um, I think sometimes I get caught like thinking that I'm the one on the throne, that I'm like the God of my little world. And I'm trying to make all these decisions and think what's best for me. And, um, when in reality, and what I've learned is, you know, he's the one sitting on the throne. He's the one that knows what's going to happen. Like, and that takes all the pressure off me. And once I kind of really started to understand that and really like almost buy into that, I've been able to play more freely, been able to just really focus on things that I can, you know, take, you know, control of. Um, and then let, you know, everything else, like the results and stuff like that, um, let him have that, let him have all the anxiety and the self-doubt and just kind of give that to him, um, which has helped me a lot this year because this year has been a grind. Um, and kind of once I've understood that, you know what, he's on the throne, he knows what's best. Like I'm going through these struggles for a reason. I'm, I'm growing in my faith. Um, in the long run, I'm going to look back and I'm going to be so thankful for these moments uh, of struggle because I do believe, you know, through struggles is when he's working the most. Um, and I know it's just baseball and I know that people have like real world problems. And, <laughs> sure. Um, but this is something that I'm going through. This is my, you know, this is my life right now. So um, through these struggles, I mean, I know he's definitely working and my faith is growing. And so I'm extremely thankful for that um, because that's what that's what's the most important thing about all this, not the results I put on the field. I care about that. But what I mostly care about is, you know, growing in my faith and how I am around others um, and just trying to, you know, be that light for him in that clubhouse. Well, it says a lot for you, Hunter, too, that you said yes to my request to have you come on the show because you're in you're in the middle of it right now and you're battling, like you said, in the middle of the grind. It would have been a lot easier for you to say yes after you sign your new contract, you know, in February. But you said yes here in the middle of the season when you're going through it a little bit. That says a lot about who you are, I think, and about the fact that you're willing to kind of look at this in a way that will I don't know, be a growing and a learning period for you to say, yeah, this wasn't actually that bad. I actually am glad I went through it because it helped, you know, helped me in my perseverance and my faith. I think about James one, right. And it's a, it's a verse that everybody I feel like used last year about considering it all joy when you face trials of many kind uh, because of what we went through in 2020. But I have to imagine that verse kind of hits home right now for you too. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you, you just have, you know, through the good, good times and the bad times, he's always there. You always have to lean on him. Um, and you just gotta, you gotta have faith and trust and confidence that he's, he's working. Um, and, you know, I've, I've talked to some mentors in my life through this time and um, they both like the, what one thing they keep saying is like, Hey, it's five years now and you're in that clubhouse and you see a kid going through kind of what you're going through. Like, you know, exactly how to approach him and talk to him because you went through that. And that's true. I mean, if this, if he's using me this so I can help somebody else out down the road, I mean, then it's going to be all worth it. Um, but you know, in the end, like, like I said, he's the one on the throne. He knows what's best. Um, as much as I would love to control, you know, what I do during the game, I, I can't, and I have to, you know, have confidence in him and trust him and whatever happens is going to happen and just continue to love on him and be so thankful and um, for everything he's given me. But I also want people who are listening to know, and we have a lot of coaches and players and young people that listen to this show. Uh, that doesn't mean you don't prepare and you don't work hard and you don't grind, like you say, grind, but literally get there and, and get your hits in and get your work in every day, right? Like that's still a big part of this. It's not like, well, I'm going through it. It'll eventually change. Like you kind of have to put the work in too, even though you're still trusting in God. 100%. I mean, I that's one of my things I pride myself on is, you know, I try to be the hardest working guy out there. I mean, God's given me the ability 
to be a hard worker, to be healthy, to be able to do this. Um, so I want to put everything I have into it. Um, so when I get to the, you know, when I get to the ballpark, I'm, you know, I'm pr- trying to prepare the right way. I'm working, I'm trying to get better. I'm doing everything I can to get myself ready for the game. And then once the game happens, it's kind of, you know, I play hard and then whatever happens happens, but, um, and just have confidence, you know, during this year, there's been a lot of like self doubt that's, you know, crept in my head. Mm -hmm. Um, and something that I've learned going through this, um, is, you know, if I've taken care of my business throughout the day, if I prepared myself the right way, if I put in the work, then I can have confidence that God's with me during the game, during life and whatever happens, you know, that's, that's what's going to happen. Um, and that's what's supposed to happen. Take me through, um, a little bit of what it's like to be on the road versus being at home. I just think from a fan perspective, there's a, there's a, a look inside or behind the scenes a little bit on what it's like to be a major league baseball player right now. You're on the road and you're in a hotel in Oakland. Um, I presume by yourself. So you're kind of alone and, you know, on the road doing your thing when you're home, I imagine you go back to your house, you got your family and it's, it's a different type of situation here. Explain that a little bit. What's the difference between being on home and and, on the road and do you, do your routines change and what you do as a, a, you know, a, a visitor at somebody else's home versus your own home when you're playing? Yeah, it's for me, it's like two totally different worlds because um, at home I have, I have a wife and two kids. Um, so I'm getting up a lot earlier. I'm, I'm being dad, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, and but on the road, like, I, like you said, like I'm in a hotel room by myself. Uh, I get to sleep in a little bit more, have more quiet time. Um, but, yeah, it's so nice being at home with the family and because it's it's a distraction for baseball. Um and you just get to love on the kids and just be a dad because during season, we don't get to see them very often. I mean, we see them a couple hours in the morning and then we go off to the field and by the time I get home, they're already asleep. Um, and then when we're on the road, I don't see them at all really, but yeah, I mean, it's at home. There's, I, I get to the field a lot earlier. Um, we do a lot more field, a lot more stuff like on the field. Um, but it's nice being at home and then on the road, it's more of, it's a later, later arrival. Um, and it's more just when you get there, it's, you get a workout in, go in the cage, go out for BP and then play a game. So it's more, less time at the field. Um, so they both have their pros and cons. Do y'all do Bible studies or anything like that with the team or with players? You mentioned some mentors. Do you have anything like that throughout the season or, uh, even maybe a rhythm on the road versus at home to be able to, you know, disciple and discipleship and stay connected to God. Yeah. So we do, we do, we do uh, our chapel every Sunday and then we have Bible study um, at least once on the road, um, every road trip. Um, It's just like we do it with our chaplain back home, uh, just like a zoom. And then um, at home, we don't do a Bible study because, you know, people are with families and stuff and on the road. That's, you know, that's kind of like my time to wake up, get in the word, have my quiet time. Cause I have time to just be alone and just get in the word where at home it's like, I wake up and it's go, go, go with the kids. <laughs> um, so I kind of catch up on all, you know, my quiet time and the word I'm on the road. Um, and then like Bible studies and stuff like that. It's cool. Cause on the, on the road, it's like, it's more like a team atmosphere. I feel like, you know, guys are hanging out together. Like if it's not in somebody's room or going out to breakfast, stuff like that. Um, where at, you know, at home, it's guys that families guys, you know, are hanging out with their families and stuff. Um, so it's just kind of like two different worlds, but, but you know, they're both awesome. And you couldn't really do that even on the road last year, right? Because of everything that was going on with COVID. I mean, what a bizarre year, but I have to imagine even that camaraderie and that team unity, that was harder last year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was extremely difficult. I mean, one of the best things about playing a sport or being in the big leagues is the guys around you and being able to enjoy going out to breakfast with them, going out to dinner with them, um, kind of getting away from the baseball field and just talking to them. And, um, cause you're around them so much at the baseball field, but you're doing, you're so busy at the field. You don't really have a chance to like talk or like, talk about something other than baseball um yeah. so that's you know 
the beauty about this is, you know, you get to go have breakfast, sit down, get to know them because um, they are family. I mean, we, I see these guys more than my family during a season. Um, so last year was tough because, I mean, we were literally when we get into our hotel, you, you go to your room, you stay in your room. Um, mm-hmm. You can't go in other, other people's rooms. You can't go out to eat. You can go walk around outside. Um, but that was that was basically it. So, I mean, it was just a tough year for everyone, but it's just you lose that kind of brotherhood. Let's take a quick break from our conversation here on Sports Spectrum to tell you a little bit more about Compassion International and our Fill the Stadium initiative. They have been great partners and sponsors with us here at Sports Spectrum. We love what Compassion stands for. We love what they are all about, releasing kids from poverty, helping children in crisis. We know about the pandemic. We know COVID has affected so many And it's affected 70,000 children and their families that were in Compassion programs as well. And so Compassion and our pro-athlete friends decided to join together and stand in the gap for those 70,000 kids. And thus, Fill the Stadium was born. And our goal last year was to fill 70,000 seats, empty seats of kids in need. And here's an amazing update. So far, we've filled over 56,000 of those seats. We are almost there. We are about three quarters of the way there, but it's not a sold out stadium yet. We are trying to help 70,000 kids. So we get about 14,000 seats to go and we need your help. Check out fillthestadium.com to donate and help release these children and their family from poverty. We're talking about essential food, medical care and support for a kid and their family in need during this pandemic. You can go right now to fillthestadium.com and donate today. Fillthestadium.com. He is Hunter Dozier. He's joining us here on Sports Spectrum. We are the intersection of sports and faith. Uh, clearly your faith's important. We've talked about it. Where does the faith journey for you kind of take shape, right? There's that moment when we all have to say yes and make, you know, that faith our own, not our parents or anybody else's. What was that journey like for you? And maybe the moment when you said, okay, I'm, I'm all in here. Yeah. So, I mean, I grew up, my, my parents, they're Christians. We grew up going to church. Um, but I, I, I would say that moment was probably in college. Um, when I fully, I would say bought in and, you know, gave my, gave my life to Jesus because yeah. I think baseball, the reason why I love baseball so much, cause it has brought me to uh, the Lord uh, a lot closer and just being around guys that are true believers that I'm like, I would watch from a distance and be like, man, I want to have a relationship with the Lord like that. And um, just going to Bible studies with them. And then when I got drafted, the baseball chapel has been huge for me because um, you know, some of my best friends are, you know, guys I would go to baseball chapel, chapel with in the minor leagues, uh, mm-hmm. doing Bible study with just, I would say over the years, um, just being around other believers, um, just has brought me closer and it makes, makes me want to, you know, strengthen my relationship with them. Um, so, I mean, baseball has been a huge part of that and baseball chapel has been a huge part of that. What, uh, what do you remember about that day in 2013? June amateur draft, first round, eighth overall, getting selected by the Royals. What memories come to mind when I bring that day up to you? It, I mean, every time I watch the video, I get tears. Um, <laughs> yeah, It's just a dream come true. I mean, I think the best part about for me wasn't even getting selected eighth overall. It was seeing my family and my friends' reaction. Um, mm-hmm. and that's all I watched when I watched like, the, the video back is – how they're reacting, how everyone's crying and they care so much. And um, it's just, I mean, I wouldn't, I couldn't have done it with all my family and my friends and just seeing their excitement for me is super special. And it's, you know, I'm just extremely blessed to have a family that supported me, um, have given me every opportunity and just to see their excitement that day is I'll never forget it. Yeah. And I told you before we started, uh, I never actually met your family, but I sat right behind them, I believe, at a baseball game that I attended in 2018 in Texas, your home state, uh, and seeing the Rangers and Royals play. And I had like 
seven or eight people in front of me all wearing that Dozier jersey. And I'm like, I think they're related to him. <laughs> I'll be wrong, but I think they're related to him. And I think it was your family. And you had just, I think, got called up and got an opportunity to play in yeah. the state, which is pretty cool. Um, what about that first game? I always love asking players when they make it to the show that that debut. I know yours was in September of 16, uh, ironically against the team that you're playing tonight, Oakland. What was that day like for you getting the call? I know there's always some kind of, in some cases, a fun, unique way of telling the person that they're going to the big leagues. What was your experience? Yeah, so it was, you know, they, they do the September call-ups and, they made some September call-ups like the day before and I wasn't part of the group. Um, and I'm thinking, okay, well, I guess, I guess I'm not getting called up this year. I was having a really good year in AAA and I was kind of bummed. I was like, man, like I could still, but they just called up like the rest of like the September call-ups and I wasn't part of the group. Um, and then the next day I come in and cause I've been playing, a lot, I was playing a lot of right field at the time and then I come into the field and I was playing third and I was like oh, okay I mean I guess just give me some work at third and then after the game he our manager calls me in and tells me I'm going up they had mm -hmm. to wait a day because they wanted me to get a game at third and just in case I play third up there right um and I was I was lucky my wife was in town uh, so I ran out to her told her and we were just we were so excited um we drove down to Kansas City the next morning and it was just, it was, it was like, it was a dream come true. I mean, showing up to the K to our baseball field. And it was funny because it took me 12 days to make my debut. So I got called <laughs> up. I think I got called up the beginning of September. And I didn't make my debut like 10 or 12 days after I get called up. So every day, every day I go to the ballpark or during the game, I'm like, okay, this is a day, this is a day I'm going to get it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it got to the point where some of the veterans were joking around saying, Hey, I didn't know you were on the, uh, IL and the trainers were kind of joking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were playing Oakland and we were kind of getting, um, blown out and it was into the game and I, you know, I got my opportunity and it was really cool because, um, I got like a little standing O from the fans. Um, I ended up striking out, but I remember I struck out and, uh, they gave me another little standing note. So I thought that was really cool. Um, mm. I don't, I don't know if many fan bases would do that after a strikeout. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's such, it's such a cool moment. You know, everyone has that moment that gets called up and, um, you know, just be able to like live out one of your dreams. Um, but what a cool thing about it is once you play and get a couple games in, get a couple weeks into this, um, like a big league, season you realize it's it's the same it's the same game right. um yeah same and, issues same things yeah. you gotta work through yeah yeah the and then i remember i was playing right field and i I've, I've had a couple starts after this and i'm i'm thinking to myself and i almost start laughing because i'm like we had a sold out crowd and i'm like this is crazy like so many people are coming to watch us play a game <laughs> uh, i'm like this is this is crazy and it kind of it's just it kind of like helped like relieve the pressure and stuff like hey this is just a baseball game like this is something that we do for fun like i would have never imagined when i was five years old if i told myself hey you'd be playing in the big leagues one day i'd have been like no way like no shot so just enjoy enjoy this moment um because you know one day it will be over so i try to just enjoy every day and be thankful for every day because sooner or later i won't be playing baseball anymore um, right yeah so it's, just try and enjoy it, enjoy it while I can. It's crazy too that that's five year, almost five years ago. I mean, time flies. I'm guessing when you're doing what you do for a living and the team that you play for, there's such a cool vibe. I think with the culture of the Royals, you know, just from the top down, guys like Dayton Moore and Mike Matheny, and you know, guys who love the Lord as well, which I think is is pretty cool. But the fan base, I just think it's such a unique place from everybody that I've talked to I've never seen a game in Kansas City I've seen you guys play like I said on the road but everybody I've talked to talks about how there's a culture there now with this team and how it's really a unique place and the fan base is just fantastic can you kind of talk about that a little bit yeah well, I mean it starts with Dayton um, he is and I've said this 
before is he is the best GM in all of, in all of sports. Um, yeah. And it starts with his faith and he leads, he leads the way it's supposed to be led. And it, it starts with him and it trickles down. Um, you know, Mike Matheny's done a great job. He's a faithful guy. And it's funny because we were having a conversation yesterday in the outfield, you know, just talking about like struggles and stuff and how um, faith has played a role in it. And, um, I've never had a conversation with that and with a manager, um, before. And I right. just thought, man, this is really cool. Like, um, and it just trickles down all the coaches, the players. Um, it's just like, it's a really cool, um, like atmosphere and it, it starts with Dayton. It's, you know, I, I don't know any other organization cause I've only been with the Royals, but I'm extremely thankful to be part of this organization and it starts with Dayton. All right. So I got to ask you some kind of fun questions here as we close and wind down. Do you, are you a, a binge watching guy when you're on the road? Obviously you get your time in with the Lord and you're getting your time in at the park, but do you also find yourself with time to be able to watch a show or two or three or get into like a movie or a series of movies? Is that, does that happen for Hunter on the road? Yeah, I, I okay. definitely, do. I, I like, I like TV shows. I like what are we them. watching right now? I've been crushing meat eater. Me either. Uh, yeah, I know the show. I haven't either. seen much of it, but yeah. Yeah, with Steve Rinelli. Um, it's a hunting show. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been just I've been crushing him um on YouTube <laughs> right now. But yeah, I, it's probably my favorite show. It has to be important to be able to do that on the road too. And you probably establish yourself in a way where you you know that you can and you can't just be focused on baseball every single second, or it'll drive you nuts, right? You have to have an escape. For sure. Um, yeah, cause you know, when I, I wake up and I, I try to get in the word and then, um, for the rest of the four hours, I'm sitting in a hotel room. I'm like, well, I can't be thinking about baseball this whole time. So it's a good little escape. And, um, yeah. Movies. If I'm saying, okay, you get two movies to watch Hunter right now, you can pick them. What are you taking? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, or three movies, whatever you want to, however you want to answer it. <laughs> I, over the years, I've been more of a TV show guy, but movies, um, hmm. Are you like a Marvel guy or a superhero movie guy or any of, the, of those kind of movies or, you know, I do school? like the Marvels. Okay. Um, and my soon to be four year old, he's all into the superheroes. Okay. Uh, he's a little too young to be watching um avengers like, or something like that yeah exactly but he knows all about them uh i tried to start watching the avengers with them and about two minutes in i'm like i think we we're upstairs watching and then there's like guns going off and my wife yells from downstairs what are you guys watching up there <laughs> it's like, i'm like yeah you might be a little... in about four years buddy <laughs> yeah <laughs> might be a little young um for it but yeah i'm looking forward to being able to watch it with him in a couple of years Disney Plus has the Avengers like cartoons that are more yeah, he, range for the, for him. I imagine that's something he would yeah. eat up. Yeah. Oh yeah, he loves those. How about books? Are you a reader besides the Bible? Obviously, are you a big reader? Do you get do you have books that you kind of try to get into, or is that not a good idea during a long season? I I wish I was more of a reader. Um, if I do, it's like uh, it'll be like an audio book. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I wish I was more of a reader. I really, I really do. Um, something I want to try to do more of is, you know, if I'm not in the words, just read instead of watching. All right. My last, uh, my last question, you mentioned meat eater, um, hunting, right? I, I assume you're a big hunter with not just because of your name, but because, because that's something you enjoy. Is that fair it's, to say? It's something that I'm getting more into. I go duck hunting every Okay. um off season i've been hog hunting and stuff but i'm gonna start deer hunting and okay. um maybe after baseball you know go on some elk hunts um well i was gonna ask you have you been you said you went duck hunting give us give us a snapshot of an experience that you've you've had uh you know i see i think of duck hunting and i think of you know the robertson family and duck dynasty and guys like that what was your experience like well we have a really good setup because ian kennedy one of our uh one of my good buddies yeah um he has an unbelievable place in Missouri to go duck hunting at. And he, he gets us out there every off season. We kind of do like a Bible retreat 
Yeah, um, that's awesome. So it's like a yeah, Bible retreat slash hunt. And it's like three days. And it's always at the beginning of duck season. And it's, I mean, he has the best setup up out there. And, um, you know, you wake up super early, uh, go sit in the duck blind. And a beauty about duck hunting is you can sit in the blind and you can have a conversation like this. You don't have to be super quiet, like if you're deer hunting. Yeah. Um, but then when you start seeing some ducks and you start working them, you know, you know, be quiet and stuff. And, but it's just, it's such a good time to be able to talk to those guys and also get some, you know, get some ducks, but it's, it's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. It's the fellowship side of it. Right. You talk about yeah, a Bible exactly. retreat, like that's what we all need as guys. And we're not the best at facilitating things like that, but we need to be around other dudes and talking about real life issues. I would imagine that's something that you guys get to do. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's a blast. And, uh, UPI kind of helps with that. Um, yeah. Coach Aver, and it's, um, it's such a good, we've done it for the past three or four years nice. and it's something I look forward to every year. I love it. Hunter, this is a, this was a lot of fun. Thanks for doing this. And again, kudos to you. You, you could have said not right now, uh, as you're battling here with the season, but I'm glad that you said yes. I'm glad we were able to talk about things that are more important than baseball. That's for sure. And uh, we'll have to get you on again. Maybe we'll do it in person sometime, but all the best to you. And, uh, and thanks for joining us. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's been fun. And many thanks to Hunter Dozier from the Royals for joining us here today on the show. He's a faithful dude. He really is. And I just appreciate him for, for being so open about his faith and, and going through a difficult time right now on the field as we recorded this interview. But You know, it's a long, long baseball season and there's highs and there's lows and there's good moments and there's bad moments. And Hunter, I'm glad is not identified by the highs or the lows. It sounds like he's identified by who Christ is in his life. So we appreciate him sharing his story today on Sports Spectrum. You can give him a follow on Twitter or Instagram and let him know that you heard his story right here today on our podcast, the Sports Spectrum podcast, the intersection of sports and faith. Do us a favor, go to sportspectrum.com and check out our website for all of our content with podcasts, devotionals, articles, and stories, all for free at sportspectrum.com. And whatever app you're listening to this podcast on, do us a favor and click that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode of Sports Spectrum's podcast. We got quite a few episodes out there already, three or four new ones every single week, and it's a great way to stay connected to faith and sports. If you love Jesus and you love sports, that's what we're trying to do. Bring Jesus back into the sports conversation and you can subscribe and download and then rate, review, all of those things that help get the podcast out there for more people to hear. Maybe tell someone about Sports Spectrum and join us next time right here on the show. My name is Jason Romano. Love you guys. Have a great rest of your day.